think we're live. I'm still still not used to this um to the the watch alongs, but um I think I think we're live now. I think we're live. How is everybody going? How is everybody doing in the chat? Right. We are live. There we go. Made sure we're all live. Put the fan on. Go. We're all good. Up and running. For Australia versus Lebanon. Exciting, exciting times. Australia with the chance to go through to the next round if they win this game. Very, very possible that we see the Socceroos go through to the next round after this game. Obviously only need... I believe they only need one point, but I know they will be looking for all three. Obviously, we'll be looking for all three. I have not meant to do that. Right, okay. Like I said, still, still getting used to this. Alright, I put that in the wrong one, that's why. Alright. Let us know if everything's all right. If you're watching the live stream, make sure everything's all nice and running. I'm trying. I think I've got the chat up, but don't quote me on that. Ah. There we go. Tan. How are you, mate? Good to have the good to have the live streams back. There we go. Alright. Now I've got the chat up. That will help with everything. There we go. There we go. Alright. Everything should be good now. Everything should be good to go. Can I? I can pop that out. There we go. Big, big game coming out for the Socceroos. Big, big game. Obviously, we've still got another, got another ten minutes to kick off. Still, so you know we've got a we've got a bit of time, a bit of time to kill. Get some wait until we get some good people in the chat as we've had over the last few live streams of course um all right there we go there's the lineup as well if no one has seen the lineup uh Graham Arnold did suggest that there would be a lot of change and there has been a lot of change with, you know, Duke coming in. Yankee keeps his spot, which I was a bit surprised about, considering, you know, we have those, we do have six, um, do have six strikers in the squad. So I was a bit surprised with um, only one striker change. Goodwin's back, obviously come back from that uh, bit of sickness. Up the bloody Socceroos, I agree entirely, Ben. Welcome. Welcome. It's um it's a game that we're we're looking forward to. A game that we should win, realistically, right? Um But yeah, as I was talking through the lineup, Goodwin, he's back in the squad. Rustic starts this time. I think that was um I think everyone kind of saw that coming. Metcalf keeps his spot. I was a bit surprised about that. Not going to lie. A bit surprised about Metcalf keeping his spot. Um, 
And then the only other one is Gethin Jones coming in. And I'm pretty shocked about that, to be completely honest. Pretty shocked about Gethin Jones coming in. Especially if we're going to go with that 3-5-2 that we kind of played in the last game. Um, which kind of worked, especially when Rustic came on. Um, but that's the Australia lineup done. I can get up the Lebanon lineup. Not many changes for Lebanon. Don't think they actually are changed at all from their last team. Let me just get up the last game and put it against it. There was one change in the midfield. One change in the midfield and a change in defense with Sarafadine and Matar coming in on the midfield. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not many changes for Lebanon. Obviously, I've highlighted a couple. Highlighted a couple of their players in Matuk and Bugle that, you know, I think will be... Um, will be, I think, the two danger men for Lebanon in this game. Yes, that, that's that's what we're all hoping, right, Tan? That we play better than last time because it was wasn't the best performance from the Socceroos, and I'm I'm sure they'd kind of say that themselves as well. I don't know what I've done with my. I have to get the, my stream back up because that's just stopped working. Interesting. Was on Paramount. Well, let's just go to 10 play. I think that's going to be the easiest one to watch. Obviously, everyone knows about Paramount and the problems they've had. But yeah, it's the same stream as 10 play. 10 play just seems to be the easier one to stream on, really, which is strange. But oh well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Five minutes from kickoff, the teams are walking out. It's going to be a um, should be a good game here for the Socceroos. That's what well, that's what we're all hoping for, right? Socceroos in the away kit because technically this is an away game, although it's being played in Canberra. Decent crowd there at Canberra. Heard it's a sellout. Heard it's a sellout, which would be really good to see. Bit of a Canberra banner there in the background. Or maybe that's the part of the stadium. I'm not sure. Don't watch a lot of rugby league games in Canberra, so um, couldn't tell you what the stadium normally looks like. Is my mic a bit loud? It looks like it's coming up a bit louder. I'll turn that down a little bit. Template, yeah, template does seem to be a bit, a bit faster um, ahead of the coverage than Paramount. Not sure if that's just um, because Ten has the infrastructure to do it in Australia, and Paramount it's still an American company. But um, yeah, interesting. All the yellow and green flags waving around at the moment. Pretty good pitch there at Canberra by the looks of it. Combank wasn't the greatest pitch last time out. I'm sure no one's going to disagree with that. Looks like it's still a pretty decent Lebanon contingent in Canberra as well. It's good to see. Good to see. Make sure that you are all subscribed to the channel as we do this watch along. Make sure you like like the stream, subscribe to the channel. Helps tremendously for you guys, uh, for me, and for you guys to to see more content from me. That's for sure. Mike's fine. Sweet. Awesome stuff.
that. Um, can I? Just get rid of chat for a second there. Um, then if I go through there, then do that. There we go. Now that now the chat's all caught up for me. Score prediction. I am going for. Hmm. I reckon it's going to be a clean sheet for the Socceroos. Do think it's going to be a clean sheet. I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for a three nil. I'm going to go three nil Socceroos. I think there'll be a decent amount of chances that they can create in this game, especially with Rustic and Goodwin starting. I think that's they're two very key. Two very key additions to the Socceroos team from the last time out. So it's a debut for Sharafadine in defence. Which is, um, you know, the big, big debut to come against the Socceroos, I'd imagine, for Lebanon. Let me just try. Give me a sec here, guys. I'm just going to... I'm just going to add the table. Just won't be able to see me for a second. And there we go. There is the current table with these two teams highlighted. We have Australia first. It's, you know, perfect, perfect so far. Palestine picked up a win last game against Bangladesh. Lebanon with a draw against both Palestine and Bangladesh. Really need, Lebanon need to win. I need, They really need to get a point out of this, I feel like, to get, to make sure they go through in the next round. Make sure, make sure everyone drops their score predictions down in the comments below. Make sure you get your score predictions in quick and fast because... We're just about to kick off here. Just a reminder, there's the Australia lineup for anyone that missed it earlier. And then there is the Lebanon lineup with Debuton Sharafuddin in defence. Alright. Let's get ready. Let's get keen, everybody. Let's get keen. Um where is Okay. All right. Just about to get four nil. Tarn's going with a four nil. That would be that'd be entertaining to see. I'd be look. I hope you're right. I hope there's some goals in this game. I hope there are some goals in this game. Just about to kick off. Obviously, there is a bit of delay between stream and um, you guys watching it. I will be behind a bit in your eyes. So, there we go. We are underway. Underway. Socceroos for their fourth qualifier in this first round against Lebanon. Second game against Lebanon. And sitting pretty top of the group. Early. Here we go. Mert calf Blocked. Freshly's going for a 3-0 Australia. Come on, the lads. I, I like it. I like it. I like the enthusiasm. I'm here for it. Obviously, Australia, you know, then didn't, didn't play too crash hot in the last, you know, 10, especially 10 minutes in um in that first game against Lebanon. They hit the post a couple of times. Pretty unlucky not to get on the score sheet. Really, Lebanon. Looks like Australia's still going with that um with that 3-5-2 that they were playing in possession last game. With Irvine being the Irvine being the defensive midfielder, obviously because Bacchus is out. 
Um, and Gethin Jones is playing up high, which is going to be interesting to see how he compares to Nathaniel Atkinson in that sense. I think if I think if Lewis Miller was fit, I think this system would really, really suit Lewis Miller. What are your opinions on Arnold out? I see a lot of people saying it. Look, a lot of people are saying it at the moment, but I think here's an early chance. Cassini Yangi. There we go. Very, very early goal from the soccer roots. Come on, Cassini Yangi. Come on. Cassini, a good one has popped up straight away with a chance. And a very, uh, obviously, the first chance was saved from Cassini Yangi by the Mata, the goalkeeper. But that's what Craig Goodwin adds to the team. It, it's very, very close to being on and offside. But. Oh, he's hit the post the first time, Yangi, but it's it's a great finish. It's a gr it, look. It's a great. It's a great play by the Socceroos. Craig Goodwin. Your Google Home isn't set up yet. Oh. To get started, why is that? The I don't know why the Google Home decided to, to pop up there, but there you go. That's what Craig Goodwin adds to this. Soccer side, right? We didn't see that last game. We didn't see those nice low crosses into the box, and Craig Wins added that straight away. And we're up three minutes. We're up within three minutes against Lebanon with the Cassini Yangi goal. That's his first goal. First, first goal for Cassini Yangi. Um. Sorry, go back to the go back to the Graham Arnold question first. Um, I I do think people expect too much of Australia in a sense, right? Yes, we should be blowing away these teams, like these lower teams. I I like I think that's that's no question about it. Like we should be blowing away Lebanon and like we should be it should be like a Bangladesh game against like these lower level teams, right? But I, yeah, it's it's tough because against these bigger teams, he sets up really well. It's just against the lower teams. He can't, can't break down these lower teams, whether that's his tactics or the players. That's that's a whole different question. But, um, yeah, it's... I, I'm, I'm not saying Arnold out at the moment, um, but I, I can see why people say it. Yengi said he wants to be the new Tim Cahill. He did actually say he wants to be the next Tim Cahill. Um, yeah, that's... Look, if he wants to aim high, you know, I'm all for it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Cassini Yankee, so... If he can be the next Tim Cahill, I am going to be very happy. Um, do you support a Prem team? I do. I don't know if you can see right there. Man United shirt. Man United fan. Don't say I can't say I watch much of the Prem at the moment. Um, between watching the A League and MPL, um, and obviously Man United aren't the best of teams at the moment. So um, yeah, I I I, was, I support Man United. I watch like the mini match of all their games, but uh, can't say I watch every game. I'll take Yangi being the next Viduka. I think that's a better shout, Ben. I think that is a better shout with Yangi being the next Mark Viduka. That's a that's a good shout actually. And I, I won't complain if he becomes the next Mark Viduka. We'll not complain at all. No, not especially not a striker that holds up the ball well, right? Like, Tim Cahill, yes. Like, unbelievable goal scorer for the national team. But as a hold-up player, probably not his strongest spot. Mares, how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good, how are you? Love Mark Viduka, yeah. Look, I, I've, I've thought many times about getting a Mark Viduka shirt. Um... Yeah, look, that be, that might be one that I might try and add to my shirt collection pretty soon. It 
It's a um, it's not the, it's not the best starts here for the Socceroos. A bit scrappy, but you know they've got the goal. They're already one nil up, and that'll put us well and truly into the next round of qualifiers. With with someone like with Palestine sitting second on four, right? Like we're we I think we're in the next round already, but um, this this win if we get this win it'll definitely confirm our spot into the next round. But it looks like it's an interesting kind of start to the game for the Socceroos, right? There hasn't hasn't been like that control of the ball that we saw from that last game. Lebanon seemed to come out with a bit more dog in them in this game. Maybe a bit of an interesting, more an interesting um tactical challenge for Graham Arnold's men. What what are your guys' thoughts? I haven't um I haven't had a watch a lot. God, I don't think I think my last one was New Year's Day. Um, might do one on Monday though. I might be doing one against you know surprisingly, <laughs> coincidentally the same game that I did on New Year's Day, which was Macarthur, Western Sydney. I might do that on um on Monday as well, Vegas on Monday. But it's a, it's an interesting kind of selection of Graham Arnold, right? He's picked six strikers. With Idale, Yangi, Duke, Fornaroli, Borello. Um, that's it, right? I think I named them all. And tag it. Sorry, and tag it. Um, but the fact that he's gone, he didn't use Borello or Fornaroli in the last game, right? Was that they're, they're the only two he didn't use? Because he used Idale, he used Yangi, he used Duke. And he used Taggart, yeah. So he didn't use Borello and Fornaroli in the first game. I thought for sure that they were going to start this game. But they haven't started and they haven't seen the pitch so far. So now I'm just questioning why it's... Oh, it's Cassini Yang is down already. Oh, no. He's holding his knee. I think he's... Oh, he's got he's copped he's copped a kick to the knee. Thoughts on Idale's performance in the last game? Um, look, it's it's the debut. He probably would have been. No, I wouldn't don't want to say overwhelmed, but like it's a big occasion for him, right? Um, but I thought he did you know fairly well. Um, we didn't. You could see his pace. He's rapid, right, John Ardell? He scored a um, few goals for Wisbaden in the Bundesliga 2 this season. I, I think he's going to be like... Um, him and Yangi, I believe, I reckon, will be the, the future number nines for the next like little period. And then you'll have the likes like Wadi and Bodic. Um, like those players will come in. I think that'll be the next generation. So I, I, I do believe like we're moving into the generation of Idale and Yankee up top. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, Tan. Uh, brother was a winger when he was in Germany. Um, which I'm, I'm a bit confused why we haven't seen Brello as like a, a winger in these two games. Huh, there is all those four strikers that I was just talking about. Are you guys surprised that we didn't see Patrick Yazbek start from the start? I am a bit. I know, obviously, he hasn't... Um, he hasn't played any games. Like, he's he's in the off-season, right, for Viking. They don't... They have, like, a... Um, I guess you'd call a summer uh, football calendar over there in Sweden. But... Um, I know he he's he, he's not match fit, but I would have liked to see him play in this game. To be honest, Conce considering that we bought him from the Oliru's squad 
to play for the Socceroos, and he hasn't seen a minute. If he doesn't, like, uh, obviously Graham Arthur said he will, like, it's 90% sure he will see minutes, but um, I would have liked to see him start. I would have liked to see him start. Whether that was Metcalf getting a Metcalf getting a rest, or even Irvine getting a rest. You know, I know Irvine's a, um, basically a vice-captain, right? But, you know, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to give him a rest, right? I, I think Yazbek is a more than capable player to replace Irvine and Bacchus, considering Bacchus' injured, uh, suspension, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We hope we hope Nizzy gets some minutes. He deserves it after the season he's having so far for the Mariners, right? He's he's been on fire for the Mariners. Would would you you know what? Well, in my opinion, he's the front runner for the Johnny Warren at the moment. In my opinion, he is the number one in line for Johnny Warren. Obviously, you can't, uh, you can't have had a suspension and be up for Johnny Warren, so that rules out, you know, Arsland, O'Shea. Oh, that's a sloppy back pass from Goodwin. Shabab and Matuk. Oh, that's a good little ball, but he's hit the side netting. Jesus, Socceroos are playing with fire there. Good one with a very sloppy back pass. Very, very sloppy from good one. And if you watch my preview, you would have also seen that I would have liked to see Silvera from the start, right? Oh, are we... Yeah, yes, Craig Goodwin. You know, he provided that first goal. But Silvera... Um, I think he's... He's more capable of breaking down these low blocks in like a sense of him doing it himself, right? Goodwin can break him down with the crosses, but uh, Silvera can get break him down with his quick feet, in my opinion. And obviously Goodwin was a bit crook coming into camp, so... That diagonal switch to good one's going to be very utilised tonight. That's a sloppy pass by Metcalf, though. Fifteen minutes in. You know, it hasn't been the best play from the Socceroos, though. It hasn't been it. They're up, but it hasn't been a great display. Make sure, if you're not subscribed, to subscribe to the channel. Trying to hit 200 subs in the next... I want to hit it in the next month. That's my... That's my... um, That's my goal. 200 subs in the next month. Oh, here's, here's Australia again. Ball gets a good one. Metcalf plays Irvine... Here's Metcalf again. It's a shot. Oh, he's rattled it into the Lebanese player there. But here's... For the Lebanon, we've got the ball still. And that's a pretty good challenge there from Harry Suter. But yeah, he's absolutely rattled it into his arm there. Oh, no, it's his thigh. Yeah, yikes. Another stoppage of play for a Lebanon player being down, though. We've already had a... Um, already had a couple of stoppages in this game, so we might see a bit of stoppage time in this. Play some griddle at halftime, if anyone's interested. If everyone's done their griddle, let us know how you've done it so far. I've done griddle in a couple of days, so I'm um, looking forward to 
Looking forward to doing a griddle. It's been a couple of days, yeah. Probably been a week or so, actually, since I've done it. But on the back of, um, on the back of Freshly's, um, question about people saying Graham Arnold in or out, I want to know your thoughts on if you guys think that Graham Arnold should be in or out. If he's out, I just don't know who we replace him with. I, I, I just, that's, that's the biggest thing, right? I just don't think who we replace him with. Lebanon, oh, here's Matuk. Oh. Very, very sloppy there from Australia. Rolls with the header straight to Matuk. Just blaze it over. Blaze it over from Lebanon, thankfully. Metcalf's tripped over and somehow found his well way some space here. A statue should be built for Graham Arnold. I mean, if they're building one for the Matildas, I don't see why not, right? Um, I would, yeah, I wouldn't get that far, but no, I agree. I agree, right? I think in those World Cup situations, I think he is. Uh, I think that's where you see how good of a coach he is. You know, playing with, like, let's face it, lesser lesser quality players than all these big teams. I think he's got, he gets the most out of them against these higher teams. Just against those lower teams that, it's, it's against the lower teams that you see the flaws, right? Like against India in the AFC Cup against uh, Uzbekistan at the Asian Cup. Like, it's it's those... It's those games that make people question him. Don't agree with Arnie's tactics, but I love his passion to grow the Australian football. Yeah. E.g. a home for the Socceroos. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Um, he's come out, especially especially post-World Cup, right? And, like, really tried to push for... Oh, here we go. Here's Metcalf. Oh, it's a good save. It's a poor shot there from Metcalf, but could have could have taken another touch... But Lebanon, Lebanon have a, um, Burgess tries to play the ball over and Lebanon headed back and Metcalf's in there, but yeah, I reckon he needs to smash it, smash it home there. Yeah, I, like his passion to grow the game here in Australia is, you know, something that you need from a national team coach, right? Because there's something we don't have. Goodwin on the corner. Sure, he's looking for a big Harry Suta here. Cam Burgess is bundled over there in the box. And it's a foul. Foul on Lebanon. They have a free kick just outside their 18. By Gethin Jones. Is there an appetite for a foreign soccer who's coach if Arnold does leave? I mean, there could be to an extent, right? Like, we've seen Gus Hiddink. Like, there, there could be. Um, But I think it, if, it, if there is a foreign soccer who's coach, I think it has to be one that... 
I have I think it has to be one that wants to has strong passion to grow the game here in Australia, right? Could you you don't want a coach that just goes, oh, I'm just here to do the job um what every couple of months when there's an international break and that's it. But um look there there very well could be. Ever it's just the same case of um who can we get? Like what kind of pulling power do the Socceroos have? Cam Burgess in a heavy heated discussion there with the referee. Very heated discussion. It's a nice little stadium here in Canberra. Was it 20,000? Something like that. Nice little stadium. Wouldn't mind one of these in Brisbane. But that's a whole, whole nother discussion that I have talked about many at times on the channel, on the podcasts, on social media. But um, here we go. That's a good ball, right? Oh, Rustich almost plays in Duke. It's interesting here with our backers. I, I, I think backers adds a lot to this Socceroos team, especially in terms of um, holding possession. I think, I think he definitely adds a lot in terms of that much. Oh, another another sloppy pass here, Shabar. It's a good challenge there by Suta. Australia can break if they're quick enough. Here's, oh, that's a great ball. Good, the keeper comes out. It's a, what, are they called that a foul? Interesting. Don't don't see how that's a foul. Yeah. yeah, like that's right. Young Klinsman did did not care about South Korea. He just wanted to, you know, obviously he wanted to do his job and win, but he didn't care about like um the development of the game in South Korea. And South Korea is one of the one of the higher rated countries in terms of the domestic game in Asia, right? You'd say they're top five, right? Because there'd be Australia, Korea, Japan, China. Um, and, maybe there's only four, and then maybe there's only four. Can't really think of a third, fifth one. But yeah, I can't really think of a fifth one. Oh, well, India, maybe. Maybe India. But that doesn't really relate to the national team for India, unfortunately. There we go. 25 minutes in here. Still only 1-0 up. Hopefully it's not like last game. Hopefully we start seeing a few more goals in this game, right? Matt Ryan almost playing as a fourth centre back here. What is it? Uh, what's it called? GIO Stadium? Capacity? 25. Decent, decent sized stadium. It's what really. Um, Really, what most cities should have for their teams, but I digress. 
because I can get into a very long discussion about that. God, Lebanon are playing the victim card here with their injuries. But they go on. Uh, how many more caps can Matt Ryan get ahead of Mark Swartzer? Good question. Uh, let's have a look. All the soccer rules. Uh, go to the Wikipedia. Um, and then we'll go players. Um, no, we're so Matt Ryan, right? He has. Hang on, can I get this? Uh, if I do that, and I do that. And then I do that. Can you guys see? No. Bugger. Oh, you can kind of see it there. Um, there we go. Matt Ryan is on 92. Mark Korcher on 109. So we've got 17 more. Close. Do you reckon? Do you reckon he gets there? Do you reckon he gets there? Seventeen more. He's basically taking him to the next. You basically take him to the next World Cup, then, right? That basically means you're taking him to the next World Cup. Seventeen more. Here we go, free kick for Australia. Craig Goodwin. Way too deep over Connor McCarf and Harry Suter. Here's a rustage. stitch. It's a good cross. But there's a chance to break here for Lebanon. But it's great tracking back from Connor McCarf. And Goodwin wins the Goodwin wins the foul. So 17 more caps for Matt Ryan to become the all-time Australian leading. 150. Wow. I don't think you'll hit that many. How old's Matt Ryan? He is only 31, to be fair. He is only 31. I could definitely see him going to the next World Cup then. Because what? We're talking two more years to the next World Cup. Give me 33. There's a possibility he goes to the next World Cup after that as well. Yeah, now look, you, you might be onto something there, Dan. Uh, ben, sorry. Well, here's Craig Goodwin. Good. Oh. Rusic is um, headed for six here. Jeepers. Good find by Craig Goodborn, but Rusic has hit it for six. Massive, massive opportunity there wasted for the Socceroos. Hasn't been many. Hasn't been many chances. I realize I've been on that screen for a bit. Let's have a look at some of the stats here, right? Uh, let's have a look. Um, all right. So, seven shots for Australia. Seven shots for Australia. Got 70% off possession. Um, only two on target. And none on target for Lebanon of their four shots. Fairly, fairly good um, 
pass accuracy from the Socceroos with 83%. And Cassini Yangi, the highest rated player so far, with a 7.9. Obviously, picking up the goal to put Australia up 1-0. Still seems like we're um, still playing the same system as we were on Thursday night with that 3-5-2 in attack and that 4-4-2 in defense. It's good to see. It's a um, very interesting tactical kind of change there from Graham Arnold. Don't remember seeing it too much during the um, during the Asian Cup especially. But yet again, I only got to watch about half of the games in the Asian Cup because of work. Here we go. Goodwin on the left. Plays Metcalf. It's very, very close to a foul, but Socceroos get the throw in. Socceroos get the throw in. Lebanon not happy at all. Suta. It's, yeah, it's a slow game so far from the Socceroos. It's pretty slow, unfortunately. What if Ange stayed with us? Now that would have been something to see. After, what? Well, when did Ange leave? Right, twenty fifteen. It was. It was not long after the Asian Cup win, right? Because he didn't go to the next World Cup. I would have loved to see um, I would have loved to see Ange to stay with the soccer, see what he could have done, but he. He basically said the same thing that Graham Arnold was currently saying, was, um, I can only do so much with the limited resources that we have, right? There's only so much you can do with these limited resources that not only the government and Football Australia give to these, to the national team. Hey Brock, how you doing, man? I've got 10 minutes left in this half. I'm going to play some griddle at halftime. Play a cheeky bit of griddle at halftime. Goodwin with a cheeky ball over to Metcalf, and Metcalf's just sliced it over the top. I need to get Goodwin on the ball more, I think. I think we need good get going on the ball more. Get him running at his get him running at his fullback. Should be through. Yeah. It um it's been a pretty sloppy game to an extent for 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 the Socceroos, right? Especially in the attacking sense and possession, like they just keep getting giving possession away. McCarthy's finishing for Australia has been poor. Hope he's not the stupid Scott McDonald. Yeah, look, he, I think I, I think McCarthy's only got one, one goal for Australia. Um. But yeah, you you'd be hoping that the positions he gets into, especially that he'd be um he'd be getting a bit more goals to his name. Nisbet Nisbet for Irvine at halftime. I think Nisbet will come on. I think Nisbet will be the, like one of the one of the later substitutions. But I think um I think we'll have Yazbek on at halftime for sure. Don't rate Metcalf Tan. Okay. I, I, I do rate Metcalf. Um 
but I think I rate him more as like a um mid like a box to box midfielder rather than like a like a ten or an attacking player. And we have a lot of um have a lot of midfield options at the moment, right? With with like Bacchus, Irvine, uh, Rustic, you got Yasbek coming through, you got Nisbet who's popping up now. Um very, very congested position there. Yeah, like, yeah, that, it's basically the same position, <coughs> sorry, same position I have on him, Ben. Goalkeeper's gone down. What? He's gone down for half a second and then just got back up. Like, nothing's happened. Um, yeah. Not, not sure. Here's talk. Great block there by, looks like it was Mitch Duke. Cross comes into the box and Matt Ryan. Not a tall goalkeeper, but he makes himself very tall there in that box. Been some pretty good form for AZ Alkmaar this season, Matt Ryan. I think... I think... That's one one position we have a bit of a logjam in, in my opinion, for the Socceroos, is the goalkeeper as well, right? We've got, got Matt Ryan, we've got Joe Gauchi, we've got Tom Glover, we've got... There's a, there's a decent amount of young... Young goalkeeper is coming through for the Socceroos, and obviously we're going to pick Matt Ryan. He's our captain. He's probably playing at the highest level out of everyone. Um, obviously, Gauchi's in the Prem with Aston Villa, but uh, he's not playing. So I think I think Gachi will eventually become the number one for Australia, but I don't think it'll be in time for the next World Cup. That's for sure. I think Matt Ryan will definitely be holding down that spot for the um the North American World Cup. It's gonna be an interesting kind of dynamic with the USA, Canada, and Mexico. Obviously I'd love to get to that World Cup. <laughs> when Matt Ryan retires after 170 caps, who takes off for over as captain? Oh, that's a good question. Because really, right, you're not thinking until somewhere near, like, the 2030 World Cup, right? A lot of these players are going to be... A lot of these players are going to be retired or close to retiring, right? Like, we won't see Irvine, we won't see... Uh, I doubt we'll see Suta, I doubt we'll see Burgess... Um, we won't, who knows if we'll see someone like a real stitch. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, especially with like the current squad, I'd go someone like, someone like maybe Kai Rolls. You know, he's been in the squad for a long time. Um, maybe someone like Keanu Bacchus. Uh, or maybe, maybe it isn't like the next goalkeeper that takes over. Right, it's that's a good question. I just I don't, I can't see someone like Cassini Yang taking it, or maybe I can. Although I don't know how much of a leader many of these players are. He's a corner for Australia. Craig Goodwin on the corner. Obviously, looking at the massive height that Australia have in the box. Uh, poor corner from Goodwin. 
Stephen Hall, yeah, that's, that's that's another one. Stephen Hall's been good for the Oli Roos. He's he's um he's been playing for Brighton's under twenty ones. His Rustich. Good one. Still on the left here, on the right here. Sorry. Puts in a good ball. Burgess is still in the box. It's another corner. Another corner. Yeah, and obviously Stephen Hall had a few penalty saves in the in the Ollie Rouge game the other day against against Egypt, I believe that was against. When's their next game? Uh Ollie Ruse. Oh, 6 a.m. tomorrow against South Korea, which is the final of the um, West Asian. That's a good ball by Goodwin. Oh, he's hit the post. Oh, Sutas hit the post. Oh, no. That's a cracking outside of the foot ball from Goodwin. Oh, and Sutas hit the post. Oh, no. Both him and Burgess lining up at the back post. Oh. Damn. Well, yeah. So, we've got, we've got the final of the West Asian uh, Football Cup. Tomorrow against South Korea, which would be a good game, actually. Really good test for the young Oli Roos. And then we've got the AFC Cup coming up uh, 15th of April. That's starting. So, what? That's that's before the end of the A-League campaign, which is going to be interesting to see who gets picked, really. It's going to be really interesting to see who gets picked from that. Pretty much close to half time here for the soccer reason. Although I think there's going to be a decent amount of stoppage time. And you got the one minute left of regular time, but I think we're going to be somewhere like five minutes at a time. The amount of stoppages that we've had here for Lebanon players going down. Back to his feet. Yeah, looks like we're going to go into the break it 1-0 here to the Socceroos through Cassini Yankees third minutes opener. But it just seems to be a um, another case of not being able to finish the chances for the Socceroos, not being able to break down these teams with the with with these low block defenses. Although at times Lebanon have sprung forward like very well tonight. Four minutes of added time. Still, still a fair chunk of added time, considering there's only one goal. But as I mentioned, a lot of Lebanon players have gone down. Socceroos have possession here. Start of stoppage time. I think we hear the Mexican wave starting to get started in Canberra here. Good one. Irvine. Another one two with good one. It's a long one two. Yankees stepped over. Oh, that's a. No way, that's not a free kick. What? You're kidding. How is that not a free kick? What? 
the hell is that not a free kick? That's ridiculous. What? Someone with an injury record like Rusic, that's the last thing you want to happen to want happening to him, right? Like, that's ridiculous. That is a hundred percent a foul. Is that a corner? Yeah, corner for the Socceroos. One last, one of the last opportunities. Oh no, it's a throw in. Interesting. I thought thought they blew for a corner. Rusic with oh, that was almost a good ball, a good one. It's well in, cut out though by the Lebanese defender. But it's dribbled out, another Australian throw in. Got a minute left here. Minute left at the first half. Cassini Yangi down the left. Good hold up play. Just finds rolls here, Cassini Yangi. It's an offside off Cassini Yangi, and he tried to get out of the way of it, but. But yeah. Cassini Yankee obviously flying at the moment for Portsmouth. He's got something like 11 goals so far this campaign. And he was injured for a fair chunk of it as well, so. Good to see Cassini Yankee having a good season overseas. After, you know, he didn't have the best season with the Wanderers last season. But there was he showed glimpses. He showed glimpses of um, being a quality player at the Wanderers last season. Obviously, with that, the big one being that 1 0 uh, goal over Sydney FC in the derby. But there we go. Half time. Australia 1, Lebanon 0. And it's it's going to be a, um, it's going to be an interesting second half. Going to be an interesting second half for the Socceroos. Hopefully, they can extend their lead. But, we are going to reset that, and we are going to play some griddle. Time for a bit of griddle, everybody. Um, and I can get that up like that, right? Uh, and I do that, there we go. See the grid, I'll pull that over a bit. There we go. There's the grid for today. Gonna hide the chat here so I can't see your answers. Make sure you also chat in the chat about what you think. But here we go. So we got the Mariners, Melbourne City, two clubs played for player of the season, 100 plus games. And MacArthur. Okay. So, first player comes off the head. MacArthur, Melbourne City. We can go for Raf, Rafael Borges Rodriguez. There we go. One off the bat. Um, MacArthur. Okay, MacArthur, two clubs played for. Uh, Ulysses de Villa, two clubs played for. That sounds right. Two clubs played for? Yep, okay. Good. That was a bit worried about that one. Um, we can go pretty basic with this one. 100 games for uh, Melbourne City. Do we want to go? Kurt Scott, Scott Jamison, Jamie McLaren. Um, 
let's just go Scott Jamison. Won 40 games for Melbourne City. Player of the season for Melbourne City. Um, who can we go for? We can go someone like Jamie McLaren. I think that's the easiest one. Go maybe, maybe someone like Bruno Fornaroli. That might be a good shout. I might imagine he's picked up a player of the season. Um, Bruno Fornaroli. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Fornaroli is surely picked one up, right? Especially in that season where he was top goal scorer. Yeah, there we go. Bruno Fornaroli. There we go. Um, player of the season for two clubs. I'm going to go with Socceroo Mitchell Duke. There we go. Player of the season when he played for the Wanderers, obviously. Um... Arthur Maras, can I think of any off the top of my head? Uh, nothing that's coming to mind at the moment. Uh, let's just go for a player of the season with the Mariners. Go someone like maybe Daniel McBreen. Um... Scott McGom uh Nick Montgomery, sorry. Nick Montgomery. I think that's a pretty good one. Um someone like Matt Simon, maybe. Uh, who am I thinking? I wanna go. I wanna go Nick Montgomery. I'm pretty sure he got a player of the season, right? He didn't. Ah, oh, no. Spewing. Absolutely spewing. Um, crap. Crap. Uh, 100 plus game for the Mariners. We've got like, people like Vukovic. Um, but I think the easiest one is Matt Simon, right? Yeah, 221. Mr. Central Coast himself. Mariners and MacArthur. Mariners and MacArthur. Michael Ruse play for Mariners. I always say he did, right? Michael Ruse? Yeah, there we go. And 100 plus games. Two clubs played for. Um, oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty easy one. We'll go with Milos Ninkovic. Here we go. 8 out of 9. Not bad. Josh Nisbet, obviously. Matt Ryan, that's... Ah. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot I could have got here, right? Like... Yeah, I, I should have just gone, like, Vukovic or... Trent Sainsbury is a good one. Matt Ryan. Miller Yednak, that's a, that's a shout. Oh, yeah, nine. Not bad. Not bad. I am going to take a quick break. Um, I will be back in just just a second. I'm just going to fill up my water and grab a little snack. All right. I will be back in just a jiffy.
I'm back. I'm back. Any thoughts? Any anyone predicting any changes for halftime for the Socceroos? I reckon we might see one. I reckon we might see someone like Yazbek or Nisbet come in. I think we're going to see one of those two at halftime. That'd be really, really good to see, actually. Um, I am going to have a quick look at... Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at the stats. Get those up for you as well. Um... All right, and if I, right, if I do that, and then if I, hang on, just trying to do that. Yeah, okay, there we go. You can see the stats. There we go. Uh, what if I make it a bit smaller? No. Um. Eh, that'll do. You don't need to see me, right? Alright. Half time stats 64% possession for the Socceroos. 10 shots, 6 on target. A lot of those on target coming at the end of the half. Um. Surprisingly, Lebanon's aren't the only one who created the big chance. Um, yeah, high pass accuracy, nine corners, so high, high amount of corners there for the Socceroos. Oh, wait, this is last game. Oh, my Lord. What, what, how has that happened? Jesus. Um, right. Here we go. These are the ones I want. 70% stats for Australia. Um, Three big chance, four big chances for the Socceroos, three miss. Yikes. Um, ten shots, two on target, three corners for the Socceroos, 86% possession. And got Cassini Yangi lean the, the stats for the highest rating in the game so far. All right. Then we get back to that one. Uh, Tan, what's your opinions on Jones? I think there is better options, especially as a right back, an attacking right back. Um, I just like obviously I'd prefer to see Lewis Miller. Lewis Miller can't play right, um, but. I, I just don't know why we're going out and finding these, like, half internationals. Where I'm sure we could find them, like, at home. Right? I, I'm, I'm sure we could find players just as decent at home. Um, also, I'd rather see John Iredale. He is definitely Australian. Uh, whether Gethin Jones is, like, Welsh-Australian. Um, like, Cambodia sits... Uh, not Cam Burgess, um, John Iredale has been performing just as well in the same team at Bolton. Um, yeah, I, I would like to see John Iredale. Have you seen my TikToks, uh, especially when I was doing the, when I was doing Aussie Watch, you would have known that I was a, I was a pretty big fan of John Iredale. All right. Oh, there we go. Half time. Pretty close to being done here. I think it was Lebanon players coming back out? Yeah, Lebanon players are coming back out. I, I, I hope there's a couple of changes at half time here. Right? Looks like Silvera has still got his, um, his civ civvies on and, um, He's not coming on at half time. Maybe we see someone like Patrick Yazbek, Josh Nisbet. That'd be good to see. I know everyone wants to see Josh Nisbet, right? Everyone that's an A League fan wants to see Josh Nisbet. Oh. 
yeah, make sure, again, make sure if you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, if you, look, I'm planning to do more watch-alongs, I'm planning on it, um, look, they're not going to be all the time, they're not, I will be straight up, it's not going to be one a week, um, but I want to try and do one, like, at least one a month, right, I want to do at least one a month, I think that'd be good to try and do at least do one watch along every month. You give you guys a bit more variety of content. And, and I guess uh, I can kind of question you guys about it here. I, like, would you guys be interested if I made videos, like, for say, like, say Socceroos videos, right? On Football Manager, where I go, like, uh, what is the... Um, it, like say I simulated ten years into the future, and this is the future Socceroos lineup. Thoughts on that? Because like maybe or maybe even like um, I simulated ten years of the A League future, and these this was the result or whatever like that, and like see who's going to be A League champions in ten years according to Football Manager, obviously. Thoughts on thoughts on? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because um. That's something I'd be interested to do. Alright, here we go. Second half. Mitch Duke taken away very quickly. And the, we won a foul already. 13 seconds in and we've already won a foul. Wow. Um, so... Lebanon made a change at halftime. I'm pretty sure the guy that got bought on has already um, picked up a yellow card. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was the same guy that came out at halftime for Lebanon picked up a yellow card. No changes for the Socceroos, though. That'd be fun. All right. That might be something I look into then, time. Thanks. Might be something I look into in the near future. Good one with the free kick. Yep. And it's a good... There we go. Second goal. Jackson Irvine with the goal. Good cross. Good cross by Craig Goodwin. Looks like it was Cam Burgess who got a good header down. It was a good save there by Maitar. And it's um, kind of just hit Irvine and gone in the back of the net. Two early goals, one in each half. Hopefully we can pick up a few more in this second half. So, Burgess is onside here. Jackson Irvine is... Oh, it's an own goal. Okay, it's not an own goal. It's not Jackson Irvine. It's, a, it's an own goal. Very, very unfortunate there for Lebanon. But 2-0 uh, for the Socceroos. Definitely what we like to see. So there we go. Come on. 2-0 for the Socceroos. Basically confirming our spot in the second round of the World Cup qualification now. And that's when it starts to get a bit harder for the Socceroos coming up against... Bit of bigger nations, obviously, due to the expanded World Cup that's coming in a couple of years, that it will be easier for the Socceroos to qualify. Hopefully, we won't have to go through these silly international uh, intercontinental playoffs again. Um, but it'll be it should we should be qualifying. Rustic with a good ball over to good one. Uh, Slow down for Goodwin, but it's a good... Oh, my God! What a strike from Craig Goodwin. Oh, my God. What a strike. I thought for sure that was... I thought for sure it had gone. But, wow. They're coming out firing the second half of the Socceroos. What a goal. Craig Goodwin. 
Rustic with a great ball. It did slow up a bit, but good ones. Absolutely smash that. What a goal by Craig Goodwin. Wow. Bang. Bang. That's crazy. Craig Goodwin with a cracking strike. Well, there we go. There's the 3 0 that I predicted. Maybe we see Tarn's 4 0 come to light very quickly here. We've scored two within three minutes of the of the second half being under underway. And the Aussie 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 chance ring out around Canberra Stadium. Wow, what a strike by Craig Goodwood. Holy crap. He's been involved in everything, Craig Goodwood, tonight. Everything positive for the Socceroos. Picked up the assist for Yankees' goal. Scored himself now. Put in the, corn, uh, put in the cross, sorry, for the... The second goal that was an own goal by Lebanon, but the ball he put in for Cam Burgess was always going to cause problems, and um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a dark day when Craig Goodwin decides to hang up the boots for the Socceroos. Oh my God! Oh, Lebanon's almost pulled one back there. Matars hit the crossbar, but wow. That's it's get it's starting to really open up now. Lebanon's really starting to commit players forwards. They want to get something out of this game. Metcalf's won the ball back here. Oh, and it's a lashing challenge there from the Lebanese player. He's not happy with that call. It's a good challenge by Metcalf, but he's absolutely lashed out of Rustage. With the studs as well. Yikes, you don't want you don't want to see that. <sighs> Sorry, Neil now. This is this is what I wanted. I wanted some goals in this game. Come on. And Rustic is still down. I'm not. I wouldn't be mad if we see uh, Yaz back on this, but come on for Rustic now. Just make sure he doesn't get too injured. We don't want him missing more game time. Obviously, you know he's only played a handful of games between the last World Cup and now, right? Nisba's got the jersey on. Rush is just still down. Yazbek's get the jersey on. Looks like Yazbek's the one to come on. There we go. Looks like Yazbek is going to get his debut. Debut. Well, competitive debut at least. Competitive debut for Patrick Gasbeck. But yeah, Tarn, that's it. Rustic just has come back, and we know the poor injury record that Rustic has. We know we know the poor injury record that Rustic has, so better to just take him off. Stretch has even come out. It's not surely not that bad, right? But it's such a bad challenge there. Such a bad challenge. It looks like it looks like it's gonna be like a sprained ankle here for Rustich.
But I guess the positive that comes out of this is Patrick Yazbek coming on for the Socceroos. Probably frees up Irvine a bit more to get a bit more forward. He's really not, we really can't put much weight on that ankle or a stitch. Here we go. Yazbek. Six forty one. Patrick Yazbek. He's in tears or a stitch. You can understand he's just had a Horrid for basically 24 months, right? Hopefully, it's nothing too bad for Rustic. Metcalf with a good ball is Mitch Duke. So it looks like Yazbek has gone with the Rustic role, and Irvine's still playing deeper. Interesting to see. Foul. Going against Connor Metcalf. They're a bit soft, but definitely a foul. I, I, I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about this week yet, right? The colour just looks like it sits so high. That's my biggest problem with it. Although, we're getting close to another. We're getting close to another Socceroos kit. Ooh, yeah. That's what I like to see. Obviously, getting close to the next World Cup, so then a new kit, I imagine, will be out next year. Oh, can't wait for it. Although, I need to, I need to find my kit that um, the Socceroos wore at the last World Cup. Can't remember where to put it. Obviously, I've got the um, Matildas kit there with... Um, Number 14, Alana Kennedy on it. Obviously, number 14 is my number. And, yeah, I'm a, I'm a centre-back as well. And Alana Kennedy, you know, one of my favourite players for the Socceroos. So. Uh, the Matildas. <laughs> How dare I say that? Or maybe the man Tildas. All right. 11 minutes into this half. We already scored two goals for the Socceroos, but we've had a very, very lengthy... Very soft. So it's a very soft free kicks going on against Australia here. Matuk, the Lebanese captain... All-time leading goal scorer, all-time leading caps, going off for Lebanon, getting replaced by Karim Darwich. What's your favourite kit? Ooh. We're talking Socceroos kits, like uh, national team kits. Um. Hmm, national, if I'm, if I'm talking national team kits, I don't know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with, like, I like the one that I've got on right now, right, it's basic, but it's like, you know, got a bit of something to it, um, it was 2012, 2012 is a good kit, 2012, I, I, I'm just also, I guess, I think, I think it's nostalgic, that 2006 kit, right? Especially the away kit. Oh, the 2006 away kit was so nice. Oh, and there is another change for Lebanon. Just prolonging it a little bit more, I guess. Poor header away there from Kai Rolls. Which with a very, very 
deep ball and it's going out for a goal kick for Matt Ryan. Yeah, look, that 2006 kit, it's just so, uh, maybe, maybe it's just it's more nostalgia, but that, that kit, I reckon it's just so basic and nice, right? Like, you don't need the patterns, you just need, like, some, you just need a basic kit. Although I do, I do, like, that spew kit, like, um, the spew kit's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I wish I had, I wish I was a millionaire. I'd just buy kits for, <laughs> just buy kits off with all my money. That's what I'd do with all my money if I had heaps of it. Just, just buy football kits. Okay, I've got 30 minutes left in this game. Once again, if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more Australian football content, maybe more watch-alongs. Going to try and commit to one a month watch-alongs at least. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, fairly good chance I will be doing a watch-along on Monday for the Wanderers vs. MacArthur game, um, but not 100% sure. Um, because I will be going away for the Easter weekend and looking to come back on Monday. So it's about 50-50 whether I get back in time to do the stream on Monday. But I do enjoy these, I do enjoy these watch alongs. I do enjoy them. Normally it's, um, normally it's just me watching football by myself. So having a talk with someone, you know, it, um, Adds a little bit more to it. But um, soccer is really starting to control this game. Scoreboard at least. You know, possession-wise, they still haven't had the best of games. I'm sure they'd be the first to admit that. So it looks like Metcalf's kind of drifted over to the right-hand side now that Rustic is gone and Yazbek's gone to the left. Which is... Um, Interesting. Is Yazbek a left footer? Is that why? Really hope we see Josh Nisbet, right? I really, really hope we see Josh Nisbet tonight. Who else do we want to see off the bench? Who else, who else do we want to see off the bench? Someone. Um... Who, who have we got on the bench? That's the real question. Um, uh, I'd like to see Sammy Silvera. You know, I'd, I'd like to see Thomas Dang as well. I'd like to see Thomas Dang in this kind of system. Um, I'd like to see Fauna Rolly come off the bench. Would like to see Fauna Rolly come off the bench. Maybe score his first Australia goal. And that'd be something to see. Um, yeah, so if I, if I was to make subs, I'd probably go Sammy Silvera, Tommy Stang, Josh Nisbet, and Fauna Rolly. I think that'd be my four other changes that I'd make if I was Graham Arnold. Hope we don't get Japan next round. Yeah, wouldn't that be an absolute ditch up if we got, um, if we got Japan next round? Obviously, this is the second round of qualifying. We're going into the third, but Australia goes straight into the second because of their because of their FIFA rank. I believe is the reason behind it, or is it? Yeah, I, I imagine it's their FIFA rank. Here's Gethin Jones out on the right hand side. Tries to play through Yangi, but it's a good challenge by Lebanon. This one by, by Harry Suter. Looks like Yazbek is a left footer. So there's another another left footed option in the team. Which is good to see. Yeah, good versatility. That's what we need. Here's Metcalf on the right hand side. Left foot cross. Yangi. Oh, he, I think he tried to bring it down there. 
Hand, well, that's a handball in the box. That's a handball in the box, right? Right? Do, do you guys do you guys see that handball? Yangi with the quick feet wins it back though. Here's Mecca. Gethin Jones down the right. It's a good cross. Mitch Duke just puts it over. Hasn't hasn't really been in play involved much with the play tonight, Mitch Duke. Oh no, Cassini Yangi kind of just kind of cushion tried to cushion it down for like the aspect to run onto it, but yeah, yeah. That's a handball. That's a handball. Hey, Harry, how are you, mate? No, no, don't worry about. Don't worry about being late. How are you been, mate? Luke, how are you, mate? Yeah, that's. That's exactly what I thought, Tan. Clear handball. The first one's off the shoulder, you know, I'd allow that. But that second one is a um second one's just come off the shoulder, right onto the hands and Hey, uh, good to hear, Harry. Good to hear. Oh, and the other car's showing too. One of the Lebanon players. Looks like Descent for that yellow card. But Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's Josh Nisbet. And John Ardell back on. Josh Nisbet, 642. Look how small he is compared to Cassini Yangi. Come on. Oh, come on, give us a picture of him next to Harry Suta, surely. Joshy Nisbet, let's go. He is... Australia's messy. Who's your favourite player for the Socceroos? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, we're talking current Socceroos. I would have to go with... I do like Cassini Yangi. I do. Um, but I have to go Keanu Backus. Big Backus fan. Obviously a Wanderers fan. If you can see by the... Where am I pointing? Uh, like there. Uh -huh. And my Wanderers shirt there. And Wanderers hat. So, yeah. Bacchus. Uh, I'd, Bacchus I'd go for um, as my number one favourite soccer at the moment. All time, Mark Bresciano. Fuck, I love Mac Mark Bresciano. Oh, that's... Yeah! There we go! John Iredale goal! Yes! There we go. Oh, he's in tears. That is great. Was that Paddy Yazbek that put the cross in? That's a... That's great, John Iredale. He has been... He has been in some good form for Visbarden. Yeah, Paddy Yazbek with the cross. And John Iredale. With the cool finish, which yeah, very well could be his first touch of the game. That's a cracking, cracking play by Fatty Esberg. John Idell gets his first international goal. Four nil to Australia. Four nil. This is the kind of performance that we want to see. Still hasn't been great performance. But you can't argue with the the four goals for Australia.
just his second appearance, John Ardell gets his first international goal. You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it. Cassini Yangi with a goal. John Iredale with a goal. Get Josh Nisbet a goal. Get Josh Nisbet a goal. He's Iredale on the ball again. He wants to go forward. He wants to... He really wants to put Lebanon to the sword here, Iredale. He's got some pace on He's got some pace on him. He's got some pace on him. No way, that's a foul. I, I, I'm feeling the same time. I think this could be a um, could be a big score by the end of this. We still got twenty minutes, plus stoppage time. I think there's going to be a decent amount of stoppage time as well. I, I, I can, I, I feel the goals coming, especially with people like Yazbek and this bit in the midfield. Now they don't stop running. Idale looks like he's up for it as well. Ben says, why has Craig Goodwin not been the starting left wing for Everton for the last 10 years? <laughs> I'm sure Everton would have, you know, and so I would have loved someone like Craig Goodwin, which is interesting because they, they do have a history of um, bringing in Australia players with them. Um, with Tim Cahill, he's in this bit down the right-hand side. He can create something. Leading a sister in the A-League so far. Tried to play in Idale, but blocked by the Lebanese defender. And yeah, um, um, yeah, Lebanon, uh, not Lebanon, sorry. Everton would have absolutely loved to have Craig win in hindsight, I reckon. But luckily for us, he's been in the A-League for most of his career. Pick Harry Suter, playing around the back. 4-0 to Australia. Hitting the... This is a um, good performance, especially in the second half. But Soccer has scored three goals in the second. Here's Idale. You know, bit of a scuffle at the edge of the box. And he's giving away the foul. But I think that's a bit of um. I think they've both kind of committed a foul there, but I know it's been unlucky that it's gone against him. What what what's everyone's predictions on what the end score is going to be in this? I'm going to go for a um. I think we're only going to get one more. I think that's going to be five. I think it's going to be five now. I think we're then at five now. It's a good ball by here, by Lebanon here. Darn. It's cut out by Burgess, though. They've still got it. John Aldo really working here in this um as striker. He's coming deep, try and win the ball back and try and get Australia on the attack, which is good to see. Definitely gonna be someone that Graham Arnold likes. He kind of kinda of plays a bit like Mitch Duke in a sense, with lots of energy. And not not afraid to get his hands dirty on the defensive side as well. No paper planes this time. <laughs> oh, there's been a... There was players... Uh, there was people being kicked out at the Wanderers, uh, the Sydney Derby game that I went to for throwing paper airplanes. 
which is absolutely bonkers to me. I find that absolutely crazy. Oh, I need to crack my back. Oh. There we go. We have about 15 minutes left in this half before stoppage time. Yasbeck gets the ball out of the Australian penalty area. Roll's getting closed down here. A bit of bit of hesitation in the around the penalty box for Australia. Me. What? Definitely one of our most convincing uh, World Cup qualifiers in a while. Obviously, that Bangladesh game in Melbourne. Um, the biggest we've seen in a while. Can't even remember what it was in that game. 8-0? Eight, eight Something like that. This bit with the header out. Lebanon are holding a good bit of the ball here at the moment. Australia are just kind of looking like they're when a counter attack at the moment. Just, just when they get the fall, they want to go forward. There we go. Lebanon's had a shot on target. Obam Shabam. Obviously, the striker that plays for AFC Wimbledon that I covered in the preview before this game. Socceroos, I'm sure we'll want to put another couple on the score sheet here. Really just um, put a stamp on their authority in this game. Uh, Alex Robertson, should Arnie have called him up? Um... I think he would have if he wasn't injured. Pretty sure he's out for the rest of the season. Um, I want to say it was like an ankle injury or something like that. He suffered with Portsmouth. I think um, I think he's gone back to Man City to rehab. I think it was that bad. I think he's out for the rest of the season. Well, I would have liked to see him. Yeah. Um, if n I'd love to see him in the. Uh, under 23's Asian Cup in April. Would really love to see him in that. Um, but by the sounds of it, it seems like a pretty, pretty long shot. Yeah, yeah, he got injured. Um, so he got injured just after the... Like, just when the Australia, the Asian Cup um, started, because I wanted to see him in the Asian Cup squad, and he didn't get picked. Um because he thought there would be more chance. I think uh, he said that the, 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 he reckoned there'd be more chance for like the clubs who allow him to go to the uh, under 23 Asian Cup, you know, for Olympic qualifiers. And then like the next week he got injured. And I'm pretty sure it was pretty, pretty bad injury. Uh, Twenty-five thousand and twenty-three. Good crowd in Canberra. Good crowd. A ham, hams. Yeah, a hamstring, hamstring tear it was for Alex Robertson. Um. And apparently it's pretty bad. Yeah, Portsmouth. Portsmouth don't think they're gonna. He's gonna be back for the rest of the season, so that's a bit, a bit unfortunate for both Australia and Alex Robertson.
Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh. Looks like we've got Tommy Dan coming on. Another one of those substitutes that I wanted to see. What chance Valpardo playing for us? Um, by the sounds of... Uh, he's with Sassuolo? Is that who he's with? I want to say that he's with Sassuolo? Uh, Valpardo... Yeah, he's with Sassuolo. Yeah? Um, yeah, by the sounds of, I think he's going to have to move away from Sassuolo if he wants to, uh, if he wants to represent the national team, in my opinion, because they uh, are, reluctant, are reluctant to kind of let him go on any, in any international duty. They want him to basically, if he is going to commit, he want, they, they want him to commit to Italy. Um. And obviously, if he was you know, called up for this, and it's the, apparently it's the same with Sakati at the moment, which is a bit disappointed. Idel, all, and there we go. 5 nil. Craig Goodwin. Two for Goodwin. Idel makes that goal. Obviously, there's a bit of a deflection there from the Lebanon player, but... Yeah, great, great. There we go. Five nil. Five nil. Come on. Don't think Italy would pick him. No, I don't think Italy would pick him for the Euros. But I think it's the fact that um, Italy kind of obviously rate him enough to kind of think that there's a possibility that he could represent Italy in the future. Um. So I think I think that's why they they won't let him go. I think there's a um, a heavy influence there from the Italian FA. Good one. Here we go, Sammy Silvera, Tommy Dang. So that's that's all the that's all the Australian changes made, I believe. Right, there's only five that you're allowed. Tommy Dan comes on for Gethin Jones and Sammy Silvera comes on for Mitch Duke. Um, and almost imagine we go back to a, a, a like just a conventional four three three now, right? But um, unless Silvera ends up playing up, up top along Idale. But it's still it's, it begs the question, right? <clears throat> Why was Borello and Fornaroli bought? They they haven't seen minutes. Um, and I'm sure Borello would have rather spend this time with his newborn son, in my opinion. Um, just interesting kind of choices there by Graham Arnold. We pick the six strikers. We only use four of them. And someone like Fornaroli, right? He's very, very well on the tail end of his career. You know, he obviously didn't have a very... He's not had a very long uh, international career with the Socceroos. But, I like, I just... If he's not going to play, don't pick him. That's just my thoughts, right? Because he can't come on in this game. Brello is not going to come on. Yeah, it's just interesting. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sure. Yeah, like I'm sure Fauna Rolly would have liked to. I'm sure, Fauna Rolly would have liked to you know, rest his body a bit before. Finals, especially for victory. <laughs> uh, 
Kill here. I believe we can now tick off all but two outfield players from the bingo square. That's true. That is true. I didn't actually end up putting out a um a thing for that bingo square. But if I get that up real quick. If you're not aware, on the Learning Aliens podcast last week, we created a bingo card for um, for for these two Socceroos games. Gone Yangi goal, so we've got that one. Uh, we've got ten plus goals that we're not going to get. Uh, didn't get a hat trick. Um, haven't got a Sutar goal. We can pr pretty much click off two clean sheets. Uh, no red cards. Um, so I think there's about four that we didn't get there. Unless uh, we get Craig Goodwin to score a hat trick. Uh, Idale comes on, does more than Duke in 20 minutes. Hopefully Idale gets more club minutes so he can be a stable. Yeah, look, um, I do think Idale will be one that we see for a very, very, very long time in the Socceroos, in my opinion. Um, and obviously Duke's getting towards the end of his career. I look, Obviously, it's, uh, it's apparent that Arnie likes him, right? But um, I just don't think that I think there's better options now. Obviously, when he came into the squad, there wasn't there wasn't really those options, right? Cassini, Yangi, Iredale, uh, Varelli wasn't really in form. Fauna Roli wasn't in form. When Duke came into the national team, it was um, it, it was basically like one of the only strikers that we had, right? But now I think we've got those strikers, and we've I think they're more technical strikers than Mitchell Duke. I love Mitchell Duke, don't get me wrong, but I think we've got better options. I, I think we have better options now. Yeah, closing in on the end of this game. Five minutes, pretty much, of regular time. I think we'll have about five minutes of injury time as well, considering that we had that Rusic injury early in the game. Good to see Tommy Dan getting some minutes again for the national team. He's been playing pretty well for uh, Nagata in Japan. Can we can we get a six? Can we get a six? Looks like most of these um looks like most of the players are pretty content with a with a five nil, but um yeah I'm sure sure people like Idale I'm sure Goodwin would like to see like to get a hat trick as well. He's he's sitting pretty high still at the moment. Sutar's almost definitely going to get a move this this summer, right? Yeah, well, this European summer. Like, surely he gets a move from Leicester. Leicester aren't using him. Surely, surely he's, um, he's moved on from Leicester. Got someone like... um. Got someone like Cam Burgess who's you know playing for Ipswich and they're going pretty well in the championship. Maybe we see maybe we see Cam Burgess in the, the Premier League next season with with Masalongu, who is um who's now retired from international football, but you know it is not one that no one will ever forget. Um uh, if you if you have ever watched the Socceroos, especially during that twenty fifteen Asian Cup run where he was the focal point really of our success. But, 
yeah, it's inter- it's interesting to see. Um, look, soccer. I think I think the quality of Australian football is is, is slowly getting better. Right, we got people. Yes, yes, they're in the lower leagues. Like, um, uh, Cam Burgess is in the championship, which is still you know very respectable league. Uh, but we've also got players in League Two, which is like Portsmouth, like Cassini Yangi, like Alex Robinson. We got uh, Gavin Jones, John Iredale at um, no Jack Iredale. Sorry, I get confused between the two. They're basically the same now. Uh, Jack Iredale at um, Bolton. Uh, we got John Iredale at um, at Vine Wiesbaden in Germany in the second division. We've also got you know, Jackson Irvine, Connor Metcalf in the second division of second division of Germany. But you know, both of those German. T- both of those German uh, base team, like base players, like um, Metcalf, Irvine, and Idale, uh, are in pretty good positions to get promoted at the moment. Longo was a magazine in 2015. Injuries robbed him in his prime. I agree. I reckon we could have seen a um, I reckon we could have seen, you know, Longo in definitely in the Premier League at some point, right? I think we definitely this definitely would have been a possibility. Five minutes of stoppage time. Not long left here of the stream, so make sure you have subscribed if you haven't already. To stay tuned to the channel for more Australian football content, not just Socceroos, but A League as well, and hopefully some different videos in the future. Maybe some um, maybe some football manager stuff. Maybe looking into the future of Australian football and the A League. That'd be interesting to see. But yeah, make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already. Make sure you leave it a like on the live stream so other people can, you know, come back and have a have a watch if they're interested. Lebanese goalkeeper has gone down again. Saw him go down earlier and get up about five seconds later. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, a couple of years ago, we were relying on Aaron Moy, right? Um, he was playing at a pretty high level. He was playing at, he was playing at Huddersfield. He was playing at Brighton in the Premier League. Now, now, I don't want to say you don't recognise him because he's a quality player, but um, it's it's more of a, it's more of a jointed unit like they're all on the same level right where you've got uh, Aaron Moy who was just on a different level above everyone so it's, it's good to see that you know we're not relying on someone like Aaron Moy to you know score a world either free kick or play an absolute cracker of a ball or but yeah no it's good to see it's good to see anyway. Two and a half minutes left. That's a good ball into the box. Here's Sammy Silvera jumping up for a header. Matal, the goalkeeper, has come out way out of his box, but luckily for him, boss come off Tommy Dang and it's a throw in for Lebanon. Even someone like Tom Rogic, right? Obviously, he probably wasn't as effective in the latter years of his of his um, career, but oi, that's a. I mean, he got the ball, but a reckless challenge. Really hope that Camera can get this um club up and running for the next season of the. Of the A League, yeah. Obviously, there's pretty decent support in Canberra. I know a lot, like a lot of people would have flown in for this game, but 
obviously there's decent support. They have a pretty good women's program going down there with like people like Michelle Heyman, Mayor Milivojevic, and you know it'd be it'd be a shame to see Canberra go under. Same with the Jets. Oh, Sammy Silvera is going to oh. No, just miss out on getting on the end of that. Semi Silvera. Yellow card for Semi Silvera as well. He's been pretty um pretty disciplined on giving his cards out, this referee. Pretty um hasn't hasn't shown the little cheddar cheese too often. But it's comfortable. Ends up being a comfortable second half win for the Socceroos especially. Hang on, we could get another one here. Here's Silvera. Uh, he's just got the ball dispossessed by him from the Lebanon players. Should just about do it though. Played all five minutes. They're, they're not they not got trying to go forward here much here, Lebanon. Referee should just blow it. I don't know why he hasn't blown it yet. We've almost played six minutes. There we go. Full time for the Socceroos as they went 5-0 over Lebanon and seal their spot in the third round of qualifying for this 2026 World Cup. Idale with his first goal. Cassini Yangi with a goal. Goodwin with a double and an own goal from Lebanon. A good performance from the Socceroos, in the, especially in the second half at least. Nisbet with a debut. Yazbek with a debut as well, so... Really good to see here for the Socceroos. But that'll do us for this little watch along. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you are like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more of these. And um, yeah. Oh there, oh, there we go. We got the picture. Nos Josh and Nisbet giving Harry Sue for a hug. That's what we wanted. All right. Thank you all for watching. And we will catch you soon. Bye.